Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. In a previous video, I went through how to cut down a tree, showing you the three things that you need on your stump. Um, that video did really well, but there's a lot more to discuss, and I want to go through some of that in this video. We're going to talk about some higher level cutting techniques, both on felling trees, trimming limbs, how to cut up the tree once it's down on the ground, and some very common practices that are very widely used that are actually not safe. There is a lot to know when operating a chainsaw, and I'm always learning new things. We're gonna cover a lot in this video. Even if, like me, you've been using a chainsaw for decades, I'm probably gonna to touch on some things that maybe you hadn't considered before. So if you wanna learn something about chainsaws, you wanna up your chainsawing game, watch this video. I think you're gonna find it interesting. I have to throw a disclaimer in here. There is way too much to know about tree felling, about chainsaw safety, for me to go through everything in a couple of videos. It's up to you to educate yourself and make sure what you're doing is safe for you. Be careful out there. I do a lot of different things, a lot of dangerous things, and I think chainsaws and tree work are probably the most dangerous thing I do. So first step in cutting down a tree is gauging the lean. Which way does that tree want to fall? I can be a tree hugger at times, but even when you want to cut down a tree, you gotta be a tree hugger. It, it's actually pretty hard to gauge exactly the, the direction that it's leaning just by standing back and looking at it. But when you come right up to it, have your chest on it, and you look up, it becomes pretty obvious. So I can see that this tree is, is leaning that way. Yeah, it wants to go that way. Kind of right towards me where I am now. Now fortunately for me, there's nothing in that direction that I'm worried about. So I can drop it that way, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. If there was something there I wanted to avoid, I'd be thinking about roping it and pulling it back this way. We're not going to cover roping in this video. I might do another video on that later. If you guys want to see that, definitely give this video a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know that you guys want to see it. Another technique that can be useful is if you had limbs that were going that way, you could take those limbs off to change the weight of the tree so that it would dominate in that direction where you want it to go. This tree doesn't really have any big limbs hanging off in that direction, uh, but that can be helpful. We'll go through how to cut off a limb later. So we're set up to take this tree down. Now I'm going to do something different on this. What I typically do is called a conventional wedge. You come straight in and then you take a, a wedge cut that way. You know, people have different terminologies for this. Some people call it a wedge, some people call it a notch. You know, you're taking a wedge out of the tree, you're cutting a notch into the tree, whatever. I think the professionals call this a face cut. Uh, to me, that sounds like a trip to the ER. Ow! You're cutting a wedge out of the tree right here. A Humboldt wedge is commonly used by the professionals. Uh, it's flat here and the angle is here. And I don't usually do those. I'm gonna do one on this tree so that we can kind of look at that. Here I'm putting on my cut resistant chaps. Wearing chaps is a great idea. The problem is I'd say the majority of homeowner chainsaw users don't even own chaps. And you wanna be safe, absolutely. Get some cut resistant chaps, go ahead and pay the money. Most of the injuries on a chainsaw happen to your legs. Uh, it would also be a good idea to wear some steel toed boots. This way, you know, if something slips and the, the chain comes and hits my legs, it's not gonna cut me. Uh, these are gonna resist that. Helmet, ear protection, face protection, all good ideas. Remember what I said about the felling line. This line on the saw is what you wanna use to determine where this tree's gonna go. So I'm going to be going like that, looking at this line and cutting a, a horizontal cut. All right, so I am about a third of the way through the tree and it's pointing where I want it to go. This line right here. Now for a conventional, I would go ahead and make my notch 
like this, but for a Humboldt, which is what we're going to do, I'm going to make my notch down here. So now you can see why I don't typically do a Humboldt notch. I find them much harder to get your wedge right. That is a horrible wedge. And it's much harder to revise when you're like this, um, for me at least. So now, look over here. I totally missed this side. I am way off. I came up into that. Uh, you know, now I've got to fix this notch. Um, this is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit goofy, but I, I should be able to do it. Uh, I need to come down further and come up and connect with that corner. So let's see if I can manage that. Actually looking at this wedge, I am not nearly steep enough. Um, this wedge should be more like that. Ugh. And it's so hard to revise this. Uh, I think I'm highlighting why I do a conventional notch and that's what I would recommend for people that aren't as familiar with this. Now, there's one more way to do it and that is called an open face notch. Uh, and that's where you angle it both ways. And uh, that will open up my, my notch so that the tree can fall most of the way before it hits and the, the hinge breaks off. So uh, that would be another option here is to take that up. All right, so why is a Humboldt more, um, why is it a superior notch? Well, it leaves a, a squared off log. So if I was using this for lumber, I don't have part of my log missing because I put a notch in it. So, you know, I'm gonna do a back cut slightly above that corner couple inches straight across the back there and when that tree starts falling this is immediately going to be down lower than the hinge you're going to have in, in my opinion less chance of of kicking back off of the stump now I've read uh, on some sites they say the exact opposite uh, I'm not quite sure I understand why they think it's going to kick back more than a conventional notch just in my opinion they're much harder to cut and uh wouldn't recommend it for the layperson. Before we cut this, something else I want to talk about here. Remember, this is our hinge wood. That's supposed to be about 10% of the tree. Now it's going to vary depending on the species and the state of the tree, but about 10% of that width. So if you've got a, a 20 inch tree, you want a two inch hinge or, or thereabouts. The hinge is your control. Don't cut the hinge off. That's, that's really what's keeping that tree going where you want it to go. Now, it's a common practice uh, and, it, and a wrong practice. People want to cut a back cut at an angle. And I think they think because they're coming up here, it makes the tree less likely to come back that way. Uh, but that is incorrect. That, that's not true. I would challenge anyone who thinks that that is the proper way to cut to find a website or a link from, from a reputable source that recommends a cut like that. I've looked at, you know, steel, Husqvarna, forestry websites, the OSHA website, they all do a horizontal back cut. Cutting like this, I guess people think because it's coming vertical, it's somehow going to keep the tree on that side. It's not. If the tree is coming back this way, this is not going to stop it. In fact, you know, a cut here with a wedge in it is going to do the same thing. It's, it's going to resist that tree coming back in this direction. But when you come like this, the OSHA website actually says it makes barber chair more likely. What I see here, if you've got a horizontal back cut and the tree's trying to come this way and these close and hit, now your tree's leaning here and your hinge is in tension here. And it's vertical tension, which is where wood is strong. If you're like this and that tree comes and it hits, well now you're doing, you're doing that. So now your, your hinge has actually got a sideways force on it and it's more likely to break off. Uh, and if it breaks off, the tree's going that way. So, so this cut actually makes the tree more likely to fail. 
you have the same sideways force on the stump now, and wood is weakest in splitting, so the stump can actually split out, and then you have nothing holding your tree from falling back in that direction. If you disagree, certainly leave comments. Many, many people do that. I think they're wrong. You can do that and get away with it, especially, you know, I could do that right here because the tree's leaning that way. Uh, it's, it would work. The other thing I would argue on that is it's much harder to start at an angle and hit the spot you want to hit. You know, actually you'd want to hit like two inches above. So you'd want to stop right here. It's very hard to get that right. But horizontal, it's much easier to hit that point. If your angle is a little off, you're going to end up, you know, you'll be down in here and then you end up below your, your notch or you're, you end up too high or you end up not parallel because now you've got an angle here and an angle here. It's hard to juggle all that. Keep your back cut horizontal. It's safer. It's the way you're supposed to do it. The other thing I wanted to say is wedges. Wedges in the back cut are obviously used all the time and a good idea. You know, you can start your back cut in, you can pound a couple of wedges. That ensures that the tree won't try to come and close your back cut. But if your tree is leaning this way and you're trying to push it over with wedges, every time you slam that wedge in there, you're generating upward pressure at, that is also generating upward force on your hinge. And if you overdo the wedges, it is possible to make your hinge fracture and break off. And that's a disaster because then that tree's going wherever it wants. Let's get this tree down. I don't think my GoPro liked that so much. There it is. Still recording. Remember when I said my wedge wasn't big enough? Well, you can actually see when the wedge closes and the hinge breaks off. The tree is still well above the ground. I proceeded with dropping the tree even though the wedge wasn't perfect because it's out in the open, it's not going to hit anything, and I'm cutting it in the direction that it's leaning. Basically, it's an easy tree to drop and very forgiving. If it was more complicated, I would have fixed that wedge. So that went pretty well. Uh, the hinge is actually a little less than it really was. I kept cutting when I saw the tree start falling. That reduces the amount of this kind of splintering and stuff that you get in it. The wedge is now in the stump and the log is pretty square. Now, I'm not going to use this for wood, obviously, because this is a dying ash tree. But you can see how this technique would be more useful if cutting the trees for lumber. So when cutting a tree, you want to have a, an escape route. When that tree starts to go, you need to know where you're going to go. And the answer is, it's 45 degrees in that direction. This is the, is the safest place for you to be. When trees are falling, what tends to happen if something goes wrong is the tree can buck straight back off of the back of the stump, so you don't want to be here and get hit by that. Or it can hit the ground and come sideways in either direction, so you don't want to be here. So the thing to do is cut. Once the tree starts going, you need to have a path in that direction for you to escape. And you know, out here in the open like this, you still want to do that, but it's not so crucial because you know that tree's not going to hit anything and it's much more predictable. Um, but for a lay person, absolutely. Get away from the tree, go that direction. Uh, if you're on this side, then it would be 45 this way. If you're in the woods, make absolutely sure before you start cutting that you've got an escape route because... Oftentimes there's brush piles and there's things in the way and I will actually cut a little path for me to uh, run along, especially if this tree is going to hit something like another tree that may be dead, you know, hang up on a limb or something. You want to get away from that. So in cutting up a tree, once it's down, you've got three things. 
<laughs> you really do. You've got three things that you need to pay attention to. One, the forces of the limbs, make sure that you don't get hurt. Like when you cut something, make sure it's not under tension and as soon as you release it, it's gonna come hit you. That's the most important thing. Followed by, don't get your chain stuck. Uh, pay attention to the forces. Is it trying to pinch your chain or is the cut opening up? Uh, and then the last one is keep your chain out of the dirt. If your chain hits the dirt, you're gonna have to stop and sharpen. It's amazing how quickly they, they get dull. I get it down to just the log. So you gotta get all the branches and everything off of it. And you have to use some common sense. Think about what's going on with these branches. Like this one, it's actually above the ground. So this one is, is hanging out. Typically on a tree that I've dropped, I would just cut this into firewood lengths from the end. What I'm doing here is using this horizontal limb that's hanging out over empty space as a demonstration of how to cut a limb off of a standing tree. In other words, if I wanted to change the weight distribution of the tree, or if I'm just pruning the tree, or sometimes on a dropped tree, the limb is just too long or too high for you to reach. Which means the top of this is in tension, it's being pulled, and the bottom is being pushed because it's trying to bend down. So if I cut through the bottom much, it's gonna to start to pinch my blade. Contrast that with this branch, which is being pushed into the ground. The bottom would be in tension and the top in compression. So if you cut this from the top, it's going to pinch your chain. Now I have a limb that's just hanging out there, just like a, a limb would be if it was on a tree. Now, if I wanna take this limb off and I don't want my saw to pinch, I wanna cut from the top. But if I just cut from the top, that limb at some point is gonna to start to break and it's gonna start fracturing in here and the limb's gonna swing all the way down and hang or go until it hits the ground. You'll have to keep cutting and then the remainder of it will, will come back. So let's, let's do that. This is not how I would cut a limb off, uh, but let me show that to you. See there, it starts to splinter. Now, if it didn't hit the ground, it would have swung all the way down and be very splintered. And then you have to keep cutting for it to fall. That works, uh, but it kind of messes this up. You know, say you're not ruining this tree, you just want to take that limb off. There's a better way to do it. Now I've got a horizontal limb here and I'm gonna use a hinge technique on this, uh, but it's a little different. You don't want it to function like a hinge does at the stump you actually want this hinge to break off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting from the bottom. I'm gonna watch it and I'm gonna feel for when it starts to pinch my chain. But right as it starts to pinch, I'm gonna come out. And then at that point, I'm gonna cut from the top. What's gonna happen is it's gonna bend down, the hinge is gonna bend, it's going to hit, and the hinge is gonna be in tension. And then I'm gonna cut the hinge off and you'll see that it comes off all of a sudden. It, it does it in one piece, there's no like, swinging down and splintering like it did on the other side. So I start cutting from the bottom and if you notice you can actually see the end of the limb move a little bit and I can start to feel the pinching on the chain. So I come out then I cut directly across from where I just was on the top and then the limb really starts to move and now it's it's hitting at the bottom. So I've got a hinge in the center there, and I'm now going to thin that hinge out until it breaks. And there, it just comes off straight down in one piece. If this was a limb that I was cutting on a tree, I'd come out a foot or so from where I want to be, ultimately. I would cut it off just like that, and then I would put an angle cut on it like this. You know, assuming this is, this is up now, that is how I would leave that so that rain can sheet off of it. And the best thing to do would be to get some end grain sealer and seal that if you're trying to preserve the tree. That protects it from disease and protects insects and stuff from entering there. And you can cut straight through at that point because you don't have any leverage on it. There's not a lot of force on that, so it's not gonna splinter, it's not gonna do anything weird. So typically I will start at the top of a tree and get all the small stuff off. Nothing complicated here, just cut it off and drag it out of the way. All right, so I'm just going to drag most of that junk out of the way, and then I'll show you what I'm doing as I cut to pre prevent my chain from getting pinched. And we're also going to do a cut where it gets pinched, and I'm going to show you some things you can do about that. This branch here, I've got a break here. It's broken there. It's stuffed into the ground. 
I can't really tell which way the forces are on it, but it moves easily. I can tell it's not under much tension. So it doesn't really matter, um, but I'm gonna watch as I cut. I think it's actually supported somewhat. If it's hanging out, then the tension is on the top. If it's stuffed into the ground, then the tension is on the bottom, and the bottom is gonna wanna open up as you cut. So in that case, you wanna cut from the bottom up. So let's see what that does. So I just saw it move and, and the cut was indeed widening, so, but not much. There's not a lot of tension on it, so it's safe for me to cut it. If there's a lot of force, you kind of want to position yourself away from it so that if it like springs back after you release it, it doesn't get you. Now this portion is just hanging in the air. That's a great time to cut into firewood lengths and you don't have to worry about your chain accidentally hitting the dirt. So that one is sticking in the ground. So it's kind of acting as a beam and the tension's on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut up from the bottom right there. Perfect, I was wrong, but started to pinch my chain, get it out of there and then go from the top, go from the other side. Now I like to get all of this junk out of the way because it makes for bad footing and just makes things a little more dangerous. This Y, nothing's broken that goes right into the trunk. So that is gonna prevent that log from rolling or moving or doing anything like that. Both of these are firmly on the ground. So I'm leaving those there and I'm gonna take care of everything else. So then I just have the log in this. This thing is trying to fall. So the tension's on the top. With what I showed you earlier, what would be the best way to cut this off? Now, if I just start cutting from the top, that's gonna come down, it's gonna start to splinter. If it splinters a lot, it's hard to get your chainsaw to cut right. So it's much better to make it pop off cleanly. So how do we do that? See how that, making that hinge and then cutting it off, it made it suddenly come off. So it's a much more controlled way to take something like that down. Now, oftentimes you'll find there's areas of the tree that don't have anything underneath them. So, you have to just get in the habit of looking at this and seeing the forces on that. This thing would like to fall down to the ground. So if I want to cut this, the way to cut it is from the bottom. If you cut from the bottom, as you cut down, it's, the cut is going to open up and it's not going to pinch. If you cut it from the top, as it starts to sag, it's going to close and it's going to grab your chain. Then you're going to have a problem. I would tell you right now the absolute best way to cut this is to start at the top go down until it just starts to sag. Maybe not even that much, but cut some of it because it's easier to cut with the weight of the saw and then come from the bottom. That way you don't have to pull the saw up through the entire log just to that point. Someone not as experienced, just cut this from the bottom. It's perfectly fine to cut on top of the bar. Um, what you don't wanna do is hit the end of the bar while the chain is spinning because it's gonna throw the saw up and that's kickback. Now, kickback is not that big of a deal. You just have to be ready for it. Uh, if you're really fatigued, your saw's wearing you out and your arms are getting weak, that's when it's dangerous and that's when you ought to take a break. I'm gonna do something stupid here, two things actually. One, I'm gonna demonstrate kickback. I'm gonna rev my saw up and, and hit the bar and I just wanna show you that it's not something that you can't control. If you're ready for it, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. If your footing is bad and you're not ready for it, your arms are really tired, well then the saw can get yanked out of your hand and that's when people get really hurt. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this from the top and we're gonna get our chain hopelessly pinched and then we're gonna see what we can do about that.
If I stopped right here and then came from the bottom, that would be perfect. You're done. Chain is hopelessly pinched now. So what can you do? Well, there's a couple things. I'm gonna start out with the most basic that probably won't work. You can take some wedges and you can open that saw turf back up. But that requires lifting up the whole tree. I'm just not sure these wedges are gonna be up to that. Huh. All right, that actually worked. I didn't expect it to. So that's one option. And it's pretty stuck again. The other option is to take another chainsaw and do a cut nearby that's proper. So I could come over here and I could cut from the bottom. With this little saw that would take some time, but I could do that. Once I was all the way through, this wouldn't have all that tension on it anymore and I'd probably be able to get my saw out. So that's another option. I think the best option for most people is my next option. Assuming the wedges don't work. Now lots of people aren't gonna have a second chainsaw. Chainsaws are expensive. But what you can have for pretty cheap is another bar and chain. So if this ever happens, now don't put it on backwards. Lift up on the bar, tighten just until that chain is fully engaged in the groove. Right there. And tighten it down. And it's like I have a second chainsaw. I, I'll do my cut properly coming from the bottom right here. Something else I want to show you. I am not picking this up with my back. I'm under here, I've got my elbow against my knee and I'm levering off of my knee. My back is really not doing much at all. If you learn the technique of how to pick up and apply pressure without your back, you're gonna be much happier at the end of the day. So it tried to pinch me again and see how it split there. That's where coming part way down at the top and then at the bottom, it gives you that sudden fracture again and would have helped prevent that. This thing was so high up in the air. Look at how much that cut has opened up. It's a full inch and a half at the bottom. But now this is no longer stuck. My strategy here, when you've got a log big like this and I want to cut it into little logs is to cut it into lengths that are manageable enough that I can push them and roll them. And that's going to make it much easier to keep your chain out of the dirt. So right now I can't roll it. It's, it's too big. Here, I have, I have a space underneath this. So what I'm going to do is right here, which is about in the middle, we'll make two manageable size pieces. I'm going to come up so that I keep it, keep the chain out of the dirt and get that cut in half. And then uh, I'm going to be able to roll these and that's going to help me again, keep the chain out of the dirt. So this one, I'm going to cut part way on the top and then I'm going to finish on the bottom. Uh, people that really don't have much experience, these saw teeth dig into the log and I use those to lever against to put pressure on the cut. So I'm not pushing down, I'm, I'm into the log and I'm just twisting, just pulling up a little bit actually. I've got it on full throttle and I'm varying my pressure based on how the saw is responding. You don't want it running wide open with no resistance, you also don't want it bogging down. So you vary your pressure based on that.
Sorry, I had a little battery failure. It likes to do that. But uh, basically, I cut them all the way down to ground level, but I didn't go into the dirt. And then I rolled it, rolled it over on its side so that I can now cut the remainder. You can see right here, I wouldn't want to cut through that because that little bit of dirt would dull my chain. But uh, there's, no, there's no dirt over here. So I can finish that cut just like I finished that one. And then I'll have individual logs and a clean chain and I'm going to go down the whole trunk doing the same thing at this point there's really nothing left on this thing to be a hazard you just uh, you just want to cut it up into the size that you want and um, keep your chain out of the dirt There's a couple tricks on rolling. If you really want the ability to handle these things, get yourself one of these. This is called a cant hook. A cant is a squared off piece of wood at a sawmill. Uh, that's why it get, gets its name. It's good for rotating those on the mill. But it's got a hook here that can drive into your piece of wood and you can do it like this. Well, I kind of miss. You want that to hit first. And then it digs in. And then I've got this great big lever here that makes rotating it actually pretty easy. And if you have any trouble with the technique of getting it to seat into the wood, you can always just take a hammer. And just drive it in. So this may or may not work. I'm going to cut most of the way through right here. That'll give me one manageable log here. This being up in the air, I'm going to I'm going to break that there. That should come down and open up this cut, hopefully freeing that log. And then before I do that, I'm also going to cut over there. So hopefully as that sags, the weight is going to help loosen the two logs on the end. I don't know if that made any sense, but let's give it a try. a lot of different ways to get a, a saw unstuck but having a second bar is huge you, you really need one sometimes you get lucky and you can do that and then when you got a bunch of junk stuffed in your chain don't use your hand just use a log And so on. So what do you do with the stump? Hire someone that has a stump grinder to come grind them. Um, you know, I'm a, I live on a farm. Stump's not a big deal. What I do, I cut it as low as I can. Try not to hit the dirt. Oftentimes after cutting a stump, you're gonna have to sharpen your chain. I might let it sit there for a little while and start to rot, get a little punky. 
and then I'll just build a, a fire on top of it. Basically take most of it away. Yeah, it takes some time. You know, they have stunt rot products and things like that. You can drill holes in it and try to increase the, the speed with which it breaks down. Uh, it's either that or stump grinder, which I don't feel like paying for. It's just not worth it. Finally. You can't really see the rings clearly, so just took a plane and then you can see them really well and count them. like 98 or 99 years old. I hate to cut it down actually, but uh, it's dying. It's an ash tree and they're all gonna die. So might as well take it down now before it's dangerous to take down. Now for cutting off limbs, I recommend using an, a pole saw. You know, they make these in a manual version too. They're a lot cheaper. If you're going to use a ladder, you better have a plan for when your ladder gets knocked out from under you. Uh, because when you're, when you're cutting a branch beside a ladder, the branch has a tendency to swing right back to the base of that ladder and knock it out. Just trust me when I say ladders and chainsaws don't mix. <gasps> I don't even know what to say about this dude. It is. I think the only thing I would use a ladder for in tree work is to put a rope up in the tree, tie the rope in position, take the ladder down, then start cutting. The proper way to cut that limb off is like we were talking about. You'd want to come up from the bottom, don't let it pinch your chain, but get maybe halfway through, and then cut from the top. And that is going to cause that branch to start to fall, bind until your, your bottom cut closes, and then it's gonna hold until it breaks off all in one piece. Now, that's the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it is gonna cause the limb to fall for the, the branch to start to splinter, and then you're gonna have to kind of fight to get through the rest of it, and then the limb's gonna fall off sort of towards that side. So I'm gonna do this one wrong so we can kind of see what happens. If this guy had used this method, that limb probably would have gone straight down and he would have been okay. But I still wouldn't use a ladder on a tree. There's two limbs here. I'm going to do the bottom one correctly and you can see it go straight down. And then I'm going to do the top one just cutting from the top and you can see how much it pushes back towards the tree.
So there you go guys, that's a no-nonsense guide to general chainsaw use. A lot of things that we covered in this video, I think it was long enough. And um, you know, between that and the other two chainsaw videos that I've put out, there's links in the description, that gives you a pretty good foundation on what you need to know to operate a chainsaw. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up, come check me out on Patreon, uh, visit my Amazon store. All your support is appreciated. I've got a lot more content planned, a lot more things on the way. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.